Greetings to you. Welcome to Physics Class. In today's video, we'll be concentrating on the topic simple AC circuit. In our previous class on electricity, we look at two types of electricity static electricity and current electricity. We said in static electricity, the charges are at rest, while in current electricity, the charges are in motion. We also looked at two types of current electricity direct current DC alternating current AC. That direct current DC are current that flow in a straight line and in one direction, while alternating current AC are current that flow in a sinusoidal waveform. Their direction is intermittently and constantly changing. They are called periodic waveform. AC are used in almost all appliances we have at home. For example, the computer system makes use of the AC, Power transmission station also makes of AC. Telecommunication makes of AC, ETC. We want to, at this point, uh, inform you that every equation you have learned in Ohm's law or direct current, we also make use of those equations in this particular topic. Especially the equation V is equal to IR will be made use of in this video throughout. The, the, the class. At this point, we want to uh, write down the general equation which I call the template equation for AC circuits. So let's begin. Let's suppose A as a function of T is equal to A maximum sine into omega t plus negative 5. Let's call this equation number 1. This is a template equation that fits in every sinusoidal wave form. A is an arbitrary symbol that represents the current and also the voltage. So we write again as i as a function of t is equal to i maximum sine into omega t plus negative 5. We call this equation of 2. We also write v as a function of t is equal to v maximum sine omega t plus negative 5. We call this our equation number 3, where i subscript t and v subscript t mean the instantaneous current and instantaneous voltage at time t. And also uh, v maximum and i maximum mean the peak and the peak or the maximum value of the current and the voltage in AC. I will quickly draw something on the board here to explain what I'm talking about. This is our waveform, let's have our I, V, the positive side of the wave, zero, we have I, V, the negative side of the wave, and then we have our time in seconds. That is the graph, the so as um, transverse wave, the graph of V, I against T. Now let's suppose the wave moves this way and this way. Yeah, the wave moves this way. Okay, from transverse wave, you know about the crest and the trough. We apply the same thing here. I want to explain the meaning of I maximum omega t plus negative 5. This is the place where you have the amplitude of the wave. This is the amplitude of the wave, and so this amplitude of the wave is equivalent to the voltage. Mind you, some textbook write V or I maximum as V naught, uh, or that is V naught, or maximum. Here you also have your current, 
also have your maximum current V naught or sorry I not sorry I not or I maximum. So this is where you have your maximum current and your maximum voltage. I want to explain again the meaning of omega t. Omega t in this equation simply means the phase angle and then phi means the phase difference. What do you mean by that? Suppose you draw a cycle like this. You know this is a cycle, but what makes this a cycle? Very simple. You divide this cycle into four quadrants. You know that you have, you have 90, 90, 90, 90. And so 90 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 90 degrees will give you 360 degrees. And that is what makes it a cycle. Now, uh, degrees has a mathematical relationship with angles in radians. Angles in degrees have a relationship with angles in radians with this equation omega t is equal to what? Theta. Omega t equals theta is equal to what? 2 pi. So 2 pi is the degree that is equivalent to one complete cycle in radians to that of 360 in degree uh, radius, I mean, I mean in degree. So what we mean by 2 pi equals omega t? Now look at, it, look at the ball. Here is pi all over 2. That is 90. 90 degrees is equivalent to power 2 in radians. And so you also have here as pi all over 2 pi all over 2, pi all over 2. And so from here to here, that is half a cycle, you have pi. And then from here to here, another half a cycle, you have pi. And so uh, this pi plus this pi, this pi plus this pi will give you 2 pi. That is your 2 pi is equal to theta is equal to what? Omega t. That's the meaning of omega t here. Want to explain the meaning of plus negative phi? What do you mean by plus negative phi? Now let's suppose we have another wave here. So I will quickly draw. Let's suppose another wave begins from here and then comes here. This wave comes down here. And then this wave comes back here and this wave. And then uh, these are two waves. We call this one wave A. We call this one wave B. Now, if you if you shift wave B to the left, you have something like this. You have something as what you have in wave A. If you shift with B, if you shift with B to the left, you have something like this. And so we say that you have succeeded in adding plus 5, which is the same thing as plus 5 pi all over 2. And then if you decide to shift with B to the right, which, which is already what, where it is right now, you have something like this. You are succeeded in subtracting phi, which is the same thing as minus phi, I mean pi all over 2. Minus pi all over 2. And so if you shift the wave to the left, you are succeeded in adding the value of phi. And then if you shift the wave, to the, to the right, you are succeeded in having something like that. Uh, when you shift wave to the left or the right, we call it either the wave is leading or the wave is lagging. This happens especially when, when you have a plus sign here, it happens when the current is leading in the shift. And then when you have a negative sign, it happens when uh, a voltage is leading in the shift and then the current is lagging. We will discuss this later in this in this video. At this point, uh, we like us to to look at something 
very new. That is a root mean square value and peak value of AC. Root mean square, root mean square and peak value value of AC. The root mean square and peak value of AC is defined as that steady current that we generate the same quantity of heat with the same amount and with the same time and also with the same resistance. It is given mathematically as I root mean square is equal to I not all over root 2. It's the same thing as 1 over root 2 times I not. So let's call this our question number 4. If you evaluate the value of, of 1 pi over 2, I mean 1 over root 2, you have therefore your root mean square value will be 1 over root 2 will give you 0 0.707 and then I not. So this is a question that explains the, I mean that gives us the mathematical relationship between the root mean square value and the peak current. The peak current and then the root mean square value. And then also for your own law, you know that your V is equal to I R. So you write your root mean root mean square value of voltage is equal to your root mean square value of current times the resistance. So your root mean square value of the for the current is the same thing as your root mean square of the voltage by this. Yeah, so you call this your equation number five. We want to look at quickly what happens when you introduce a resistance, I mean a resistor, a capacitor, and inductor in an AC. So let's write resistor in AC. What happens when you introduce the resistor in AC? Let's quickly draw. Let's quickly draw uh, something like this. Give a circuit. This is our resistance. I mean our resistor R. And then our key. Then come this way. Your AC source. Then come this way. Ammeter measuring the AC, the AC source, and then let's call this a voltage across the resistor. A voltage across the resistor, as this. And then let's have a wave function here. Wave function here. Quickly. I, V, the positive, zero. You have your I, V, the negative side of the wave against T. Sorry, T in seconds. When a resistor is, is introduced in an AC circuit, the resistance of the resistor makes the current and the voltage to vibrate or to oscillate and be in the same first. What do I mean? Let me draw quickly. Let's suppose this is our current. This is our current. Yeah. This is our current. This is for current. And then this is, I mean, I mean for voltage, sorry, this is for voltage. 
And then the red one, let's use the red one. Correct. Yeah, something like this. So red stands for the current and then the this one stands for the voltage. So when a resistor is introduced in an AC circuit, this is a sinusoidal waveform you have, meaning the resistance of the resistor makes the current and the voltage to oscillate or vibrate and be in the same phase. By current and voltage oscillating and being in the same phase, we mean that both the voltage, the voltage and the current attain their maximum values at the same time and also attain their, their zero values at the same time. They also attain their minimum values at the same time, meaning they all vibrate with one common frequency. In that regard, we say that the phase difference phi, the phase difference phi is equal to what? Zero. And so our general equation for this wave function becomes your, let's write this as from our general equation, you have your I in the resistance as a function of T is equal to I maximum sine brackets omega t plus negative phi. Well, because you say phi is equal to zero, you now clean this and then write just that. Let's call this our question number five. And then your voltage becomes uh, V of R as a function of T is equal to V maximum sine bracket omega t that because phi is equal to zero. So that's what you have. And also from your Ohm's law, you know that V is equal to your I and your R. So you just bring the value of V here and put it here. And then you also bring the value of I here down and also put it here and then you also have a new equation. We want to look at quickly what happens when you put in a capacitor in an AC circuit. When you put in a capacitor in an AC circuit, what do you have? When a capacitor is introduced in an AC circuit, quickly claim this here and then we will introduce something like this. Is our capacitor yeah so this is voltage across the capacitor voltage across the capacitor okay so Capacitor in AC. So let's quickly draw a wave function. Something like this. Then you have your plus here, you have your negative, your current, and capacitor, your voltage in capacitor, your current in capacitor, and then your voltage in capacitor. Zero values. When a capacitor is introduced in an AC circuit. The, the capacitance of the capacitor makes the current and the voltage to vibrate or to oscillate and be in different threads, meaning they vibrate at different frequencies, making the voltage and the current to attain their maximum, their zero values and minimum values at different points and different time interval. So we have something like this. We have let's call this our wave function. 
against time. Then let's have this one coming here. Like this. And so let's call this a current peak value of the current with capacitor. And then let's call this a voltage, peak voltage um, capacitor, I mean the AC. So what do we mean by that statement? In this case, we say that the current leads while the voltage lags. The current leads and the voltage lags. And the current is leading, we have something like this. Current leads and voltage lags. Current in the capacitor, the voltage in the capacitor. So this is your 90. So the current leads. And so the current leads with 5, 6, 90 degrees or pi all over 2. And then the voltage lags with 90 degrees or pi all over 2. What do we mean by current leads and voltage lags? By current leading, we mean that the current first attains its maximum before the voltage is just attaining its maximum here. The current first attains its maximum and then the voltage thereafter. In each case, the current also first attaining the current first attains its zero values here before the voltage is attaining its zero values here. And again, the current first attains its minimum value here before the voltage is attaining its minimum value here. That is the meaning of current lead and the voltage is lagging. And when the current leads and then the voltage lags, we succeed, we succeed in adding the value of pi into the equation. So our general equation for the current and the voltage becomes I in the capacitor as a function of T is equal to I maximum sine into omega t plus negative 5. Because the current is leading, you clean it and put it plus. Mind you, I told you 5 is the same thing as pi over 2. The current is leading by pi over 2, meaning half of this. If you bring this one on this side, you are having one full five. And so the current is leading by half of this, that is quarter a cycle. So pi all over two is what we have there. And so you are free to clean this also, right? Plus, sorry, plus pi all over two. So that is the question. So you also have the question for the voltage voltage in the capacitor as a function of T is equal to V maximum sine into omega T plus pi pi all over 2. That is not all. When a capacitor is introduced in an AC circuit, the capacitance of the capacitor opposes the flow of current in the AC circuit. And so the opposition offered by the capacitor in the flow of AC circuit, or, or, I mean the flow of current in AC circuit is what we call in physics the capacitive reactance. Capacitive reactance is given as Xc which is equal to 1 all over omega c. You know that omega is given as 2 pi f. And so this particular equation becomes xc is equal to 1 all over 2 pi fc. You also know that 
the capacitive reactance behaves like a resistor in the AC circuit and for that reason it is also measured in the same SI unit of ohms and so it behaves like a resistor and so for that reason from ohms law V is equal to IR you are free to replace R with capacitive reactance and so write V is equal to what? I X C we want to quickly look at what happens when you introduce um, when you introduce a what? When you introduce an inductor in an AC circuit. You introduce an inductor inductor in AC. So let's explain this all right. Voltage across the inductor L. So this is a P and this is that. Okay. We will we will write this I as our V now, and then this one as our I I not yes when an inductor is introduced in an AC the inductance of the inductor makes the current and the voltage to also vibrate or oscillate and be in different frames just as what happens when you introduce a capacitor in this case what do we mean we mean that the voltage and also the current, they both attain their maximum values at different times, their zero values at different times, and their minimum values at different times. When that happens, we say that the voltage leads and the current lags. When the voltage leads, the current lags, we have something like this. Sorry. When the voltage leads, Current lags, we have something like this. So, this is voltage in the according to the doctor. The voltage leads, this is 90 degrees. The current lags. The voltage leads, leads by 90 degrees or 5 over 2, and then the current. Lags by 90 degrees or 5 all over 2. By voltage leading and current lagging, we mean that the voltage first attains its maximum before the current is attaining its maximum. The voltage also first attains its zero value before the current is attaining its zero value. The voltage also first attains its minimum. Before the voltage, I mean the call, I mean the the current is attained minimum. I mean it minimum. When this happens again, we say that we have succeeded in subtracting the value of phi. And so our general equation for this becomes uh, our voltage. Let's begin with current. Our current I in the inductor as a function of T becomes I maximum sign omega t plus negative phi because the voltage is leading now you write a negative sign here and because we say the value of phi is is power 2 and the voltage is leading by 90 degrees of power 2 you clean this and write minus phi all over 2 so for the voltage, we have V of the inductor as a function of T is equal to V maximum sine bracket omega T minus phi all over 2. That is not all. Again, as we just did in the other uh, circuit diagram, when an inductor is introduced in an AC circuit, the inductance of the inductor, that is 
the opposition to the flow of current caused by an inductor is called the inductance of the inductor. And so we have how it's called inductive reactance. That is called inductive reactance. So inductive reactance XL is given as omega L. You know again that omega is equal to 2 pi F. So you have XL is equal to 2 pi F L. Again, I told you uh, the inductors, the uh, the inductive reactants uh, behaves like a resistor in an AC circuit and so it's also measured in the SI unit of ohms and so you are treated right from ohms law that is from V is equal to IR you can replace your R with this and so we write that V is equal to IXL To this, I believe we have come to the end of today's class. When next we meet, we shall be looking at how to introduce a resistor, a capacitor, and inductor at one time in an AC circuit, or how to introduce two at the same time. And then we'll be looking at what is called impedance. And then we'll be using all these equations to solve a whole lot of questions. Thank you and remember it. God bless you.